In this video, I discuss how to make Dwarven cities interesting and unique. I am going to depart a bit from some of the canon about dwarves simply because of some of the things that I have looked at and thought about, but some of them should, will fit. And so take some of this with its own grain as you're with a grain of salt. But let's uh, talk about this. We know that dwarves live underground. So uh, I can't go to interview a dwarf or talk to a dwarf, uh, at least not in the Dungeons and Dragons sense, because there aren't any around. So we know that they live underground and we know from uh, spelunkers and things like that, that underground stays relatively cool, about 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in most caves underground. So we always see the dwarves as uh, somewhat stocky, somewhat that they may be um, using, uh, you know, loose uh, multiple layers of clothing and they also may be relative, have a little bit of body insulation, shall we say, to, to do that. We see that with some of the um, American Indian tribes, uh, Native American tribes, where they have uh, it, up in the north, they tend to have a, a layer of body fat to help insulate. And, but then you also have the Samoans, which live in the, the sort of the tropics, but that, that you run into some of that genetics, and that may play a part in some of the looks of the dwarves. And it would help if the temperature is a little bit cooler underground because of the, the natural ground cooling. Now, there is a phrase, true wealth is fresh air, clean water, and healthy food. And I've heard extensions onto that. And these provide an interesting challenge for dwarven cities. How do you have fresh air, clean water, and healthy food? But actually, water is not really an issue if you're underground. If you know, I went through, looked at mining, and often you see mining, and there's the description about spelunking. I've never done either. I have, um, I think, been in a mine once or twice in my life on some sort of tours. But what? Um, uh, but there is always a problem with at least groundwater seeping into this. And if we take a look at this, and I can't remember the phrase, but there was something about that a dwarf may be actually in uh, view some of the beauty of the stalactites or stalagmites. When I was a young man, I went through Timpanogos Caves in Utah, which is a you hike up to the top and then go down through. It's all the limestone and the, the beautiful limestone fo uh, formations inside there. And I take think about that and I would l l like to believe that the dwarves would appreciate this type of beauty and architecture. And it fits with some of their aesthetics. It's rock, it's hard, it's things like that. And in the uh, Timpanogos Cave, they have what they call the Heart of Timpanogos, which is a large uh, crystal formation, and they put a red light behind it, and it looks sort of like a heart. And, but what happens is that uh, uh, it, it's, so you see these limestone caves, and if we think of uh, a city planner for a dwarven city, where would you want to found a dwarven city? Obviously, you would want some source of gold and silver and uh, maybe copper and iron, but primarily gold is what they would be looking for. But some of that would be in limestone, some of that wouldn't, but you would also want, ideally you would want a nice source of clean water as underwater, uh, underground water. And I'll put some links below to some examples of, uh, what was it? There's 15 incredible caves where you can swim and dive and they're, the one of the things that's often true of all these is the pure water because the water uh, has been filtered through the limestone it comes in that down through into the there so if you can think about one of the things we don't picture in our mind is all the water that would probably be available in a dwarven city and we take a look at you know rome or venice or all these or uh 
variety of places in where you have uh, everything from water fountains and so on that they're known for. That there's interesting argument that the reason that New York City was able to grow so rapidly is because of the pure water, because way very early in its uh, found, they built in these massive pipes to bring pure cold water. And New York water is considered some of the best. It's got a, a variety of minerals dissolved in it. So they're going to have incredibly pure, crystal clear water and that allows you to have some beautiful architecture in your city. So the dwarven cities could have large reflecting pools. They could have large uh, pools. If they're near geothermal, thermal, you would have uh, large pools of warm water. That, that's, that wouldn't be common in all dwarven cities because it depends upon where, if they have geothermal uh, heat. If you see like Yellowstone and the, the colors of some of the geothermal pools there, but you have all the beauty of, of that. Now, because the water is so hard, it will, it, it, wherever it runs, it will, it will build up over time. We know that dwarves live a long time so what happens is that some of these cities could be quite ancient, which means that as you uh, direct this hard water, you would build up water structures and you could actually create stalagmites and stalactites as columns that you've planned. So you could imagine a colonnade that where they've driven water pipes, aqueducts over that are de deliberately leaky to create the structures of columns to create these beautiful limestone columns that are that are inside there. So the architecture of a dwarven city could be based upon natural rock and, and the beauty that would be there. And that's a long term planning that how long does it take for a column to grow? <laughs> you know, we're talking centuries, but it's this is this fits with the longer term idea of the longer lifespan. Uh, of the water. Now then, <clears throat> this brings up an inter other interesting phrase that I was looking through there and I was looking up this limestone rich water sources is one of the most important part of whiskey's flavor. Now I talked about in an earlier video about how you could make things uh, affected by understanding, you know, the various different amazing kinds of foods in various areas. But the whiskey that the dwarves could create because of the hard water would be awesome because they would be able to, to, to uh, that's one of the cr criteria that they said is important why Tennessee whiskey is that uh, it's, it's the water. It's the, the, the kind of water you want to make whiskey. So it's perfect there. And then there's a description about how you add water to whiskey to improve, to bring out various flavors and so on. So you have, we already know that the spirits that they would, they, they could create the, the whiskey, which fits into the dwarf and the beer, it'd be the effect of the dwarf and beer would also be affected by the taste of the water. It's uh, because it's cool. They would use, uh, what is it? The barbarian style of beer, where I think it's the, the yeast is on the bottom <clears throat> and fermenting. So we would know because that would be the the, the beer would be kept, kept relatively cold. They would be drinking more American style beer in that you'd serve it cold as opposed to the English style beer, which is served warm, normally served warm because it's the way the, the beer is stored and the way the beer is fermented. If, if I know a little bit about this, I'm not really much of an imbiber, but what happens is I know a little bit about this and can appreciate this. So we know that uh, Dwarven beer would be probably much darker. It would be much richer, it would be fuller. So we've talked, and now let's talk about fresh air. Since we've got, if we're dwarven planning, we would use the water to uh, hydropower to uh, circulate the air. So we have air, we would use that to uh, run massive fan type structures that would move air from the outside through the inside. But this makes some interesting, interesting features because 
we're forcing air throughout the, the, the underground structure from, from the water, this allows some interesting capabilities. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been someplace where you hear the bells off in the distance uh, chiming, you know, giving the time, various things. We have basically a built-in pipe organ throughout the entire city. So you could have someone goes up and you build into the, the air circulation system pipes that at certain times of the day they would sound off and announce the time so that you would have more accurate timekeeping and it would not be a major addition to the to the to the structure of the air circulation system to add uh, air pipes so what happens is that then different parts of the city would have different air pipes so you would have pipe like basically like a pipe organ Remember when I was a young man, there was a, I took a, a girl to a place called Pipes and Pizza, which was interesting, where they had the massive pipe organ, which was very interesting. Uh, it was an interesting place to eat awful pizza, but <laughs> the company made up for it. But what happens is that we have this with the dwarves, where that they could have uh, pipe organs throughout circulating the air. So now we've got fresh air and we've got clean water. Now healthy food has is, is always been an interesting challenge in that how would you do that? Now obviously we could do like somewhat like the Chinese, which you don't normally see uh, associate fishing with dwarves. But what happens is think about it, because you've got underground water and you if you pipe in su sunlight, and that there are some of the pictures where the where the water is crystal clear and the sunlight almost disappears, and you have uh, various things that that are there um, that you need some some sort of creation. Or if we've got underground crops that grow, which you have to do something with your ecology, which is a little bit different about how do they grow, where do the dwarves get the 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 wheat and barley and such to to grow to for their bread and beer and such that's an interesting question of how to, how to how do you solve that or is that by trading or do they actually grow some of this underground um that one i'm not going to completely answer here but we've got fresh air and we've got clean water and we can with a little bit of stretch of imagination figure out that they may pipe in sunlight or allow sunlight into certain areas that that, that uh, they would open up so that they could grow various crops and particularly the particularly the, the grains so that they would they would do that or if you want to go the magical route where we have magical grains that grow under ground or we have lichen or various things that glow that provide the lighting for the <clears throat> for the dwarven city but the but that provides us the fresh the healthy food but this gives us the thing that's going to be memorable about the dwarven city is the water that I think is something that you don't, I haven't seen anything else on when I did a little bit of discussion. We know that dwarves don't like boats, but that also fits well with this concept. They're used to still water that is, that may be tremendously deep. There was the one where the pool is 150 feet deep in one of these caves, and uh, I've put the links in, in, in the description below. Pool goes down tremendously deep, but it's crystal clear and still. So you would have you could have Roman style baths where the dwarves would come in and lounge and so on. Does that agree with the canon? It's something that I haven't seen in description of uh, of dwarves, but it fits well with the concept of lots of water underground. So you have you have all, all the, this in there so that they have the 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 pools, they have the water, but they don't like moving water like on a on a on a river because that's dangerous. So what happens is that they normally are used to controlling water, which is why there's a bit of fear that the water that they're used to is controlled and contained by the city. So that it that the structures, that water is never just allowed to 
to go seek its own, which you would see with the ocean, that you would see with a river, or on even on a lake, that it, it's where in dwarven cities, water is always controlled and contained. So it's the reason that dwarves are afraid of boats is because the water isn't controlled. It's an uncontrolled force. So that's why they would not like boats, is that that, that would there. So that would fit there. But this gives you a different view uh, perhaps maybe you'll agree with it, maybe you'll disagree. I'd like to hear what you think about that because this is what I came up with when I somebody made a suggestion, how would I make a Dwarven city interesting? You would hear the pipe organs, you would have and lots and lots of water, and it would be wonderful water sculptures and creations from water and possibly columns created by planning of water dripping. If you like my video, press the thumbs up button. I'd appreciate that. Or if uh, this interests you, you can always subscribe to my channel. There's a button right above. Uh, I look forward to hearing some comments. Tell me what you think about this and I'll uh, uh, try and reply and uh, we can see if I'll do some more of these. Thank you.